the church calendar tells us today is Transfiguration Sunday. It's also that Sunday where some people celebrate Mardi Gras. Worship team, we got to get on that the next year. And I wonder if sometimes people go to the Mardi Gras because they don't want to do Transfiguration Sunday. But you may have noticed that today we have not read those traditional accounts of Transfiguration that you find in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, where on a mountaintop, with his disciples, Jesus' appearance suddenly changes, displaying a brilliant brightness, followed by the inbreaking of a divine voice, confirming Jesus' identity as God's Son. I have often wish I could get a sound effect that said, This is my Son. When we read that account, and I, one of the reasons I believe that some people avoid that transfiguration, those transfiguration readings, is because it is our attempt to try to understand the change in Jesus' appearance that takes us away from the larger truth about the transfiguration. Oh, and it's, it's very clear. The transfiguration is not about whether or not some scientific or 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 strange physics change Jesus' appearance. The transfiguration is about that vivid and mysterious experience of witnesses that confirms Jesus' identity. It is that moment where someone says, oh my goodness, now I know Jesus is Jesus. That's what transfiguration is all about. So John does not tell this story of Jesus' appearance the way the other Gospels do. And there is a reason. The theologian Bishop N.T. Wright says that John's whole story is about the transfiguration. Throughout John, and we've, you, we've been talking about it in every one of the encounters, everything that John is doing is trying to tell us that Jesus is Jesus. Every encounter, every miracle is trying to tell us that Jesus is you. So John has already proclaimed that in the beginning Jesus was with God and Jesus was God. John testified, the word became flesh and lived among us and we have seen his glory the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. So the story we read today of the man born blind is not a story about a change in Jesus' appearance as the only sort of indication of a transfiguration experience. No, this story is about the miraculous sign that reveals Jesus' true nature. In Jesus' encounter with the man born blind, we witness how people come to know that Jesus comes from God. Put simply, as I said before, transfiguration is that moment when people get that Jesus really is real. All oh, the old people in the little country church I grew up in sang this song, Jesus is real to me. Real, real, Jesus is real to me. And so that's what transfiguration is. So now, now, when it comes to interacting with Jesus, you, you've heard me say it before, there are no chance encounters. Remember, on his journey from Judea to Galilee, Jesus found it necessary to go to Samaria, even though it was out of his way, just so he could give the woman of Samaria the gift of God. And now, now, as he walked along, he saw a man who was blind from birth. That's how the story begins. Jesus saw a blind beggar, probably one of many 
beggars. Just another sad, unfortunate soul that makes up the background scenery of a poor place like Palestine. Scenery of poverty and marginalization. And yet, Jesus notices him. And unlike those who accept that they are just sort of these chance encounters, that nothing is going on, that nothing is... Jesus notices. Notices someone who in the world has been told doesn't matter. So in these encounters, why? I guess the question, why would Jesus just notice some blind beggar? One among many beggars. Because in these encounters, Jesus keeps revealing God keeps giving people an opportunity to recognize God in that midst. Keep doing it all over, all over. Keep giving us transfiguration right before our eyes. And yet, they choose not to see. Now, is it fair for me to say they choose not to see? Well, what can we say about a people and a religious community so bound to the rules and their doctrines that they cannot embrace or celebrate the miracle of sight being given to someone born blind? What can we say about a people and a religious community which sees healing and restoration and grace upon grace as a threat? As a threat, rather than as an invitation to recognize God moving. Even after trial and error. And guess what? They choose to make this a trial. They work overtime to see nothing. Oh, you didn't hear what I said. Something that has never happened in their lifetime before. A, bo a blind beggar on the side of the road. Jesus notices him and then gives him his sight. And they decide, I'm not going to see that. I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, the, the transfiguration experience is right there in front of him, but I'm not going to pay attention to that. I, you know, I, I, I you know, I want to know, this is, this is their response. In light of seeing someone give sight who's never, who's never seen before, born blind, we've never seen a miracle like this before. This has never happened in our lifetime. We, this is just an amazing thing. I want to know who's a sinner here. Jesus has healed someone. It never happened before in the world. We, we, this is not this is out of out of this world. Someone who was blind has now been giving sight. I want to talk about sin. All right, let's talk about sin, Jesus said. In this encounter with the man born blind, Jesus' only interest is in giving the blind beggar life, and that more abundantly. He does not care why the man lost his sight. There is nothing the man has done. There is no moral failure that resulted in his blindness. In fact, the man's sin has nothing to do with anything that he has done or failed to do. The man's only sin, which is the sin of everybody in that place, the only sin is that he does not have a relationship with Jesus. He is separated from God. And then Jesus says there is no time to debate whether sin caused this misfortune or whether he is deserving of God's healing power. Now is the time to reveal God. Now is the time for a transfiguration experience. Now is the time for you to see me so that you can get next to God. That's what's going on. In response, again, in response to this, there is no celebration. 
There is only a trial. The man's neighbors and the religious leaders put him on what is effectively a trial. They, they, the neighbors question him. You can't be the one. Uh, this, 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 you know, no, let, let's put a trial. Then the religious authorities come and, and, and they put the, the man on trial and they put his parents on trial. They call the man's mom and daddy. Still no celebration. No experience of the transfiguration. The they, 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 they interrogate them all. Oh, it is, it is a, it's a show. And then I love it because with such brio, the man who now sees, the man who now is, is on his way to that relationship, he testifies over and over again. You heard Leanne read it over and over again. He keeps telling them what happened. And then it finally becomes clear. The transfiguration experience is given testimony. He becomes a witness. He's no longer a blind man. He's not only just a sighted man. He now becomes a witness. He says, you keep wanting me to make it about whether or not he is a sinner. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. All I know is I once was blind and now I see. Oh, wouldn't that be wonderful when people started questioning you? When people started looking at you, we just stop and say, wait a minute. I once was blind, but now I see. Oh, what if that I was response all week long? How do you know the way? Oh, I once was blind, but now I see. That's the testimony. That's the transfiguration. It wasn't about whether or not Jesus was right or wrong for healing on the Sabbath. It wasn't, it, wasn't, you know, it wasn't about whether there is something wrong with the man born blind that caused his blindness or whether there was something about him that made him deserving of healing. It's not about whether sinners can be the source or the beneficiary of God's healing. This encounter highlights that our separation from God is what's most important. And so Jesus wants us to have these transfigurating experiences so that we can know that God is. Jesus wants to give us an opportunity to turn to the one that is the source of life and that more abundantly. Boy, that blind beggar is a man who now sees and has a life. Let me clue you in. If you were a blind person back then, there was no life for you. There was no life. But he's given life. And so in this story, we behold the difference between one who could not physically see, but opens himself to God, to see God revealed, and those who claim to know God, but refuse to see. It is hard for, for many who consider themselves to be faithful to imagine that God wants to show up in everybody's life. That's hard for some church folk to realize that it doesn't matter who we are from where we come. God wants to reveal God's self. God wants us to have that transfiguring experience. And doesn't it make sense? Doesn't it make sense that Jesus wants us to know him? So why would he push, her, push us away? Why would he push us away? Why would he kick us out of any place that gives us the opportunity to know who God is? This week, it, it, as I was, was, was studying with this word, it, we started to see that MCC pastors all over the United States were receiving Valentine's Day cards. But when they opened the car, there were these messages saying that they were demons and that they were going to hell and that gay people can't get to heaven and, and they were wrong. And here's the thing. Here's where I'm going with this. These are people who have provided a space for us to, to encounter God 
to get to to be next to God, to get into that relationship, to see to see God revealed. And the only response from some religious people is not celebration, not happiness that here it is, a a, a community of faith trying to get into relationship. But their response is to send a card and say that you are the devil. That's their response. No, but Jesus said it has nothing to do with whether or not this man sinned or not. It has nothing to do with that. This is my time to reveal God. I must work the works of the one who sent me Today, I don't have time to be arguing with you about sin. I don't have time to be arguing, debating with you about why I do what I do. I do what I do because I am the word. In the beginning was with God. I'm living among you so that you may know God. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. So, so. Open yourself to the transfigurating experience. Look for Jesus revealing God to you. Open yourself up. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter where you've been. If you're that beggar on the side of the road, just look up. Because God is going to be revealed. Jesus is going to notice you. You're in recovery. Hang on, because Jesus notices you and wants to reveal God. If you're, if you're, you're battling that illness, hold on, hold on, because Jesus wants to reveal God. I don't know what it's going to look like, but I just know that Jesus' goal is for you to know, for you to know. Wherever you are, whatever is going on, whatever is happening in your life, Jesus is attempting to show us, to reveal to us that the, the glory of God. And the good news, the good news is that Jesus knows and understands there is nothing that we're experiencing, nothing that we're going through that Jesus does not know about. And yet, and still, Jesus is showing you something. Look up, God's beloved. Look up, hold on, reach out. Because Jesus wants you to know. Amen.